So you just got your new iPhone, and you set up an iCloud account, but what does that do for you? Today, we'll be looking at the features of iCloud with iOS 10 and macOS Sierra, and how to use them. I'm Jason with Maslin Tech, and welcome to the second episode of Wireless World. Like in the last episode that covered AirDrop and AirPlay, these features are relevant for and recorded with iOS 10 and macOS Sierra. Starting with iOS, if you didn't sign into an iCloud account during the setup process, you can do so in settings. You'll be presented with a couple pop-ups telling you that iCloud will merge data between your phone and the cloud. Lastly, you'll get a notification that Find My iPhone has been enabled. Find My iPhone is a really cool feature that can save your phone in a pinch, but it can also cause a headache if you don't keep up with your iCloud password. With Find My iPhone on, you can log into your iCloud account via iCloud.com or from another device and see on a map where your phone is. This does obviously require an internet connection, but if your phone is ever lost or stolen, you can track it through here. Find My iPhone will still stay logged in even if the phone is restored, making it a brick for potential thieves, but if you can't remember your password, it can become a brick for you too. If you lose your phone, say, around the house, you can play a sound from the phone remotely. This will ring out even if the phone is on silent. Next, contacts, calendars, reminders, and notes work the way they would with any email service. When these switches are flipped on, any data backed up through iCloud will be available on iCloud.com or any other device signed into the same iCloud account. With the Safari tab turned on, history, bookmarks, and open tabs will sync between your devices. Say you start to read an article on your Mac, but had to leave mid-read. Opening Safari on your phone and scrolling below to the open tabs will reveal iCloud synced tabs. Just tap on the one you want to open and it'll pick up where you left off. Photos, which is the most important data for a lot of people, is also one of the most confusing features of iCloud. If iCloud Photo Library is not on, then your photos are not being backed up automatically. Turning on iCloud Photo Library will back up your camera roll to iCloud, assuming you are paying for enough space in iCloud. For free, Apple gives you 5 gigabytes, but that will fill up quickly. Storage tiers from there can be upgraded from the storage button on iCloud's main screen. Once your iCloud storage is figured out and iCloud photo library is on, you have to decide between keeping the full resolution photos and videos locally on the phone or optimizing your device, which will keep low res versions saved on the device. When you open a file that is optimized, photos will download the full res version, granted you have a good internet connection. Your sync status is also visible from the photo settings, letting you see if your phone or iPad is still syncing with iCloud. PhotoStream, the predecessor to iCloud Photo Library, is temporary cloud photo syncing. If you use Photo Library, there's no need for PhotoStream, but if you don't want to pay for extra storage, PhotoStream will temporarily store photos online, up to a thousand of them, so that you can wirelessly retrieve them on another device signed into your account. Besides backups of photos, if you want to backup other data, like text history, you'll need to do a full phone backup. Once again, iCloud storage may be an issue if you aren't paying for a higher tier, but assuming you have enough space, with backup on, iCloud will backup your iOS device automatically when it's connected to Wi-Fi and power. You can manually backup the phone as well, as long as you are connected to Wi-Fi. Lastly on iOS, iCloud Drive is as close as you'll get to a file system on the iPhone. iCloud Drive can hold data from third-party apps like Pixelmator, as well as Apple apps like Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Several apps will have an option to save to iCloud Drive in their share sheet, but not all apps support this. Moving over to the Mac, you can sign into iCloud and System Preferences. Like on iOS, once you're signed in, you'll be presented with a list of services that you can sync with iCloud. Contacts, Calendars, Reminders, Safari, and Notes work just like they do on the iPhone. With each service checked, data from each app will sync with iCloud and other Apple devices signed into iCloud. Photos work similarly, allowing users of iCloud Photo Library to sync their collection online. Photos on the Mac can have multiple libraries, but only one library, known as the System Photo Library, can sync with iCloud. It is important to note that your whole pictures folder does not sync with iCloud, just the contents of the Photos app library. Keychain is a system utility that stores saved passwords for things like Wi-Fi networks and email accounts. With this service checked, passwords will sync across devices. This can cause some serious security implications if your iCloud account is ever compromised, so Apple added some extra steps to set up iCloud Keychain you will need to set up a security code that acts as a second form of authentication. For further security, two-factor authentication can be set up as well. Back to my Mac is a simple way to enable remote desktop between two Macs. 
With both Macs on the same iCloud account and screen sharing enabled in System Preferences, you'll be able to access the other Mac remotely over the internet. You can start a remote session through Finder. Find My Mac is similar to Find My iPhone, but since Macs don't have built-in GPS or 4G, it requires a lost or stolen Mac to be on a Wi-Fi network to phone home. Enabling the guest account feature on the Mac can allow the Mac to access Wi-Fi networks while protecting your data, which can be a lifesaver if your Mac is ever stolen. Finally on the Mac, we have iCloud Drive, which will receive the biggest feature update in Sierra. With iCloud Drive enabled, select the Options button. From there, the list of compatible apps will appear. Several built-in apps like QuickTime and TextEdit can now back up data to iCloud, and just like on iOS, third-party apps that support iCloud, like Pixelmator, can save the data to iCloud as well. Sierra also added the ability to back up and access your documents and desktop folder to iCloud. Once the folder is set to sync with iCloud, uploading will begin. Files that are not stored on iCloud yet will have a faint gray cloud icon next to them, indicating they still need to sync. If your Mac has limited space, choosing to optimize storage can be a great way to free up your drive. Files that are synced with iCloud will automatically remove their full-size local copy, but keep it on iCloud if you ever need to retrieve it. This can be great if you have fast internet, but will not work without a connection. One final note, unlike on iOS, iCloud for the Mac does not do a full device backup. Having a backup to an external drive is still highly recommended. And there you have it. iCloud is constantly changing and adding new features. With iOS 10 and macOS Sierra, Apple has closely tied the two operating systems into iCloud. Taking advantage of all these features can save a lot of time when jumping between devices. I hope this quick tour helped you out. Let me know in the comments below. Once again, this is Jason with Maslintech. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.